they are going after our guy. Let's go after five of their guys. It's actually a violation of the Bible. As you've probably heard by now, Trump sounded the alarm on Saturday about his potential indictment and arrest, writing via Truth Social, quote, the far and away leading Republican candidate. I love how he's sucking himself off as he's announcing he's going to be arrested. <laughs> and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Protest, take our nation back. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, presumably in anticipation of Trump supporters heeding his call to take to the streets, NYPD was actually seen putting up barricades outside of manhattan's criminal court which tells us that they do expect something or at least they think that trump's call to protest is going to yield some sort of civil unrest but manhattan's district attorney alvin bragg responded to trump's call to action by reasonably viewing that as an attempt to intimidate his office however in a memo to colleagues he remained defiant writing we do not tolerate attempts to intimidate our office or threaten the rule of law in new york he continues as with all of our investigations we will continue to apply the law evenly and fairly and speak publicly only when appropriate now, if and when this happens, I do think that it's reasonable to expect some protests, but perhaps not as big of a turnout as Trump is hoping for, given that some of his most prominent supporters are saying they're not going to be there this time around. As AP reports, Ali Alexander, who was an organizer of the Stop the Steal movement, staged rallies to promote Trump's baseless claims that Democrats stole the 2020 election from him, warned Trump supporters that they would be jailed or worse if they protested in New York City. One of Alexander's allies in the Stop the Steal campaign was conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, who amplified the election fraud claims on his Infowars show. Alexander posted that he had spoken to Jones and said that neither of them would be protesting this time around. Also, right-wing radio host Jesse Kelly explicitly told his supporters on Twitter to not protest, writing, again, what's happening to Trump is beyond injustice, but do not go to a communist city that's hilarious to protest. And if you do, you better be a rapper because that's the only way you're getting that pardon from him if he wins again. This is abuse of his followers and I despise it. Now, additionally, lawmaker and coup plotter Marjorie Taylor Greene wrote, how many feds slash fed assets are in place to turn protest against the political arrest of President Trump into violence? In other words, why show up if you're just going to be labeled a violent insurrectionist again? Because the last time that label was a little bit um, incorrect. Whatever, Marjorie. Now, in terms of whether or not he's arrested or indicted, I'll believe it when I see it. And if it does happen, though, it is going to be because of the illegal hush money payments that he allegedly made to Stormy Daniels with his campaign funds. And there's also talks of a potential RICO case against Donald Trump. So we'll just have to wait and see. I really don't know what to expect in terms of the legality of this case, where it's going to go, how it's going to affect his campaign, or how many people are going to show up to protest his arrest. However, one thing that I'm very confident about is that the right's reaction to his arrest will be thoroughly entertaining and i fully expect their meltdown to be the comedy event of the year and i say this because the mere prospect of him being indicted in the first place has already led to hilariously stupid reactions for example here's what michael knowles who filmed this scene before becoming a tradcon commentator recommended republicans do if trump does actually get indicted what should the republicans do in response i think that a republican governor or more precisely, I guess, a Republican attorney general should arrest a prominent criminal lib. There is no shortage of candidates of prominent liberal politicos who have committed crimes. Look around the Clinton circles, look around the Biden circles, look at Clinton and Biden themselves. Plenty of big criminal libs out there who have completely gotten off the hook. And there are plenty of Republican governors and attorneys general out there. I think you would need a Republican governor as well as an attorney general, because if the attorney general uh, indicts a big prominent l criminal lib and, and there's a Democrat governor, the Democrat governor will apply political pressure or eventually probably just pardon the criminal lib. So I think you, you need to have a Republican governor there as well. But let's do it. Let's, let's indict a big criminal lib. Let's, inv let's indict two of them. That They are going after our guy. Let's go after five of their guys. There's no risk here. Some people push back against this suggestion. They say, well, we're better than them, Michael. We're, yeah, uh, sure, I think we are better than them. I'm not suggesting we do anything illegal or unjust. 
I'm not saying we go after an innocent lib. I'm saying we should go after a criminal lib against whom the law has not been applied. I love how he's trying to treat this as some sort of a prisoner's exchange or chess match. Well, you see, if you arrest our guy, we're going to arrest two of your guys. <laughs> so choose your next move carefully, libs. I mean, our criminal justice system, Michael, literally does not work that way. And for all of this talk of weaponizing the criminal justice system to go after political opponents, what exactly would you call that recommendation? Is that not explicitly using our criminal justice system for political purposes? I thought that you were all against that. Now, with that being said, I, for one, have no problem going after criminal liberals. In fact, lock up all political criminals in both parties for all I care. But the decision to indict one person doesn't hinge on whether or not other defendants in completely unrelated cases are indicted. His recommendation is so bizarre. Like the, the word that comes to mind is Karen-esque, but it's dumber than that. Like it's more toddler tantrum-esque. But an even funnier response came from attorney and friend of Jeffrey Epstein, Alan Dershowitz, who explained how Trump's indictment is actually illegal, not necessarily based on U.S. law, but based on divine law. You talk about how this is bigger than Trump, about if you're able to do this to political opponents and dissidents, it sets bad precedent. It allows prosecutors to go above and beyond, and it actually makes us less free. Without a doubt, uh, there was a South American dictator who said, for my friends, everything, for my enemies, the law. You can use the law to get anybody, as Justice Jackson said, or as the KGB had said, show me the man and I'll find you uh, the crime. This is the worst example in my 60 years of practicing criminal law, of targeting somebody for prosecution, and then rummaging through the books, giving people immunity, and trying to concoct a crime that doesn't exist. And if this is allowed to succeed, none of our liberties are safe. You know, today it's a Republican who's a target, tomorrow it's a Democrat, and the day after tomorrow it's your Uncle Charlie or your nephew or your niece. Mm -hmm. uh, there'd be no limits on what prosecutors can do to their political enemies. and They're going to do it to people who are running against them for DA next. And uh, it's just a, such a violation, and not only a violation of American law and civil liberties, it's actually a violation of the Bible. The Bible instructs judges two things. Don't take bribes. That's obvious. But the number one thing is don't recognize faces. Well, shit, maybe the man, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office hasn't heard about that. Can someone maybe tell Alvin Bragg that indicting Trump is against the Bible? <laughs> because I'm sure that he would change his mind immediately. What do you even say to that? Listen, if they're this hysterical now, imagine how funny it's going to be if Trump is actually arrested. Now, not every single Republican is down on this news because Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, he towed the line, sure, about how this is the weaponization of our legal system. But he also um, was visibly giddy while talking about this at a press conference, and he even managed to get in a jab at Trump, which I'm sure Trump did not take kindly to. I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that if you have a prosecutor who is ignoring crimes happening every single day in his jurisdiction, and he chooses to go back many, many years ago uh, to try to use something about po porn star hush money payments, you know, that's an example of pursuing a political agenda and weaponizing the office. Sure, Ron, keep pretending that you're outraged. It comes off as very genuine. See, this is why Trump calls him desanctimonious, because <laughs> everything about him is so fake. Now, I'm sure that that little line there pissed off Donald Trump, but not as much as this line. I've got to spend my time on issues that actually matter to people. Uh, I can't spend my time uh, worrying about uh, things, uh, things of that nature. So, so we're not going to be involved in it in any way. Um, I'm fighting for Floridians and I'm fighting back against Biden. That's what I do every single day. That might seem innocuous, but that's huge because in other words, DeSantis is not going to intervene in this case. And that means he's not going to stop Trump being extradited to New York for prosecution. 
And we know why. It's because nobody benefits from Trump's prosecution more than Ron DeSantis. Now, Trump responded to those comments with an absolute banger, writing via Truth Social, Ron DeSanctimonious will probably find out about false accusations and false stories sometimes in the future as he gets older, wiser, and better known when he's unfairly and illegally attacked by a woman, even classmates that are underage, or possibly a man, exclamation. <laughs> I'm sure he will want to fight these misfits just like I do. Love it so much. Does Trump know something that we don't? Probably not, because if he did, he would have already told us. Either way, this news is fanning the flames of a GOP civil war. It's leading to mass hysteria among the GOP. And I'm here for all of it. So I'm hoping that Trump does get indicted and arrested, not just because I think it'll be extremely funny, but because when you break the law, you should be held accountable as any other American would. Because unlike these Trump sycophants, I actually do believe in equal justice under the law. And even though our country consistently fails to live up to that standard, when it actually does, I for one think that that's cause for celebration, not hissy fits. But we'll leave that there. I don't know what's going to happen, but either way... I'm going to grab the popcorn because it's going to be very, very interesting. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.